So what I will focus on today is starting with some of the macro trends and thought leadership that really help shape thinking and strategy on this project. What we've done so far, what we've what worked, what did not work, what are our challenges, priorities, and next steps, where I have linked all of my favorite resources that I uh, leveraged when I started this work and I continue to leverage today. A number of chat responses to your question in terms of what's on their top of mind. Some of the things that we've seen, how do you determine level of skill? Opportunity is to ensure we're prepared for the future. What skills will our employees need? How to upskill for future workforce needs? How do we build a skills-based framework and leverage Workday? And some are looking at skills development or deferment to ensure mission readiness during forecasted personnel shortages. And then upskilling or reskilling our employees for the future workforce. Uh, they're looking to create career paths. So, you know, what skills will be required, not just now, but in two or three years plus. And then communicating and getting buy-in on the power of leveraging skills to uh, power the entire talent life cycle. So those are some of the topics that are uh, top of mind. Yes, what a, while we're on this working with the business leaders, and you just mentioned how very nicely, how the business leaders from your experience don't care about all the internal mechanics of how we organize it. What I keep hearing when I read our HR kind of playbooks and how to go about that, it's important to include the business leaders. But when it comes to the skill strategy, who really owns the skill strategy? Should we just be like, keeping them up to date or collecting input, or should really this be a co-ownership or is more of the ownership on the business and we're just kind of helping organize things? And I think Anton brings that up too. And he mentions that he struggles with the appropriate skill details to capture. So, you know, for example, should he be tracking Excel skills or go granular and track, you know, for example, VLOOKUP. Excel skills seem to be broad, but then is VLOOKUP too detailed? Absolutely. And then um, do you can or do you say, hey, Excel beginner or basic skills include these functions, right? Intermediate yeah. includes VLOOKUP and advanced might include crazy data visualization uh, skills that I will never have. And that's where we struggle, right? At what level of granularity is appropriate? And then how do we, when we speak to the business, yeah. drive consistency across those conversations as well, right? Because they all come from their own perspective. Sounds good. If there is anything that you're able to share example-wise with the materials you share with us of yep. the capabilities and, and skill clustering, that would be awesome. It sounds like you're, the approach you took of getting into the detail is what allowed you and enabled you to start clustering, right? And so yep. We're, yep. we're starting down this journey at my current company, and, and I think we're going to be focused on that detail first. And it yep. sounds like that, that is the appropriate level with the business. And it's really more for the business to, to spew out you know, all their thoughts, us to collect them and then make some sense of them. And yeah. what's the, you know, are we talking consistently about the level of detail, like V lookup versus yeah. complex functions, right? And that is a language that business understands. They'll understand the capability. Yes. Yeah, they don't understand. They don't understand. Skills and yeah. Talent marketplace and all those. They're, they're just like, I want to know, I want to tell you what my people need to do. I want to make sure they can do it. And I want to be able to understand at what level, right? And, and where we can move them. And the other thing from a change management perspective, this is a snapshot of this, but it was so important to ground people on nomenclature. And so that was like one of the first things that I focus on as we started getting things out from our pipeline was we need to establish nomenclature. You know, like the number of times, like skill text ontology is not skill taxonomy. Taxonomy is a tree, ontology is a graph, like and of course, we, we don't use this with the business, but even internally, there is just um, so many different interpretations, et cetera. So we have a whole list, but all that to say, need a nomenclature that you're, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be your nomenclature. I don't care how Ericsson is you know, defining it or how Google is defining it. This is how I am defining it at Microsoft. This, this is the language we're using internally.